welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and right here in the woods behind, uh, oh, what do they call this place? Bunker Woods, behind the uh, old folks' home. And since these are God's eyes, there must be a, uh, a, a mailbox, a lunchbox around here. Jesus Christ. Another one of those lunch boxes. Don't pretend to be anyone or anything besides who you are. Ah. Wait for it. Okay, it's faded out on its own. That should mean it won't keep appearing in the corner of the screen. I should probably say out loud that the clues on the case board always take the form of Polaroids of the thing in question, with a, a scribbled note on the white part at the bottom. No, except for these. These ones where it's just a picture of someone's face with a, uh, on a p piece of notepad uh, paper. I guess these are uh, things that I've uh, worked out as opposed to things uh, the saga has seen, because this example here is Rose. The lunchboxes I've been finding were left by Rose for her use as well as the heroes. Lunchbox found in the bunker area near Bright Falls. That's it. Looks like another piece of fan fiction. Someone is having some vivid fantasies. That one wasn't fan fiction. That's weird. That's very strange. Oh yes, yeah, in the nursery rhymes. Let's finish this. Rhyme found inside the Cauldron Lake Ranger Cabin. Found all the nursery rhymes in the Cauldron Lake area. Uh, a rhyme about a reckless hero being watched over by the faraway father. Dr. Campbell thought the experiment would send me to the dark place. I wasn't sure if that's what he meant or not. Doll plus Witchfinder <clears throat> Station. There's a lesson here. Probably something about hubris. <laughs> FBC researcher tried to send me to the dark place. He was sent instead. Karma. Case closed. And it's a picture of the radio. Man in lab coat messes around and finds out. Called it. An FBC researcher was working with nursery rhymes to create a gateway to the dark place. The experiment was a success but not the way he'd hoped. Look at that. I think I've completed the uh, entire set here. I have finished the Nursery Rhymes subplot. And weirdly enough, it makes me kind of sad. Yeah, that's not fan fiction. I don't think that was the right label. Maybe there's another one out here. Um, there's the map. Oh, hey, I forgot about that. There's a first aid kit as close as I can get to the cool-looking cannon bunker as I can get. What? Shut up. Probably in this, uh, cooler just here. Uh-huh. Man! I mean, I know that I either have removed the firing mechanism or that they'd have uh, stopped up uh, maintaining it so that it would be rusted shut. But I still want to look at the cannon up close. I want to hear the cannon. Um, because I have four batteries on me, I think for once I will actually reload my batteries uh, manually rather than doing it in the middle of a fight. She just sort of twists the battery in her hands in a vague way, as opposed to, like, opening it up and putting the batteries in. Honestly, the the, the most tense part of that is... It, it, well, again, usually it happens when I'm in the middle of a fight, and whenever it happens, the flashlight turns off. I mean, just for a second. But a second is all they need. I guess it could be worse. The Taken could be, you know, contagious. 
Hey, there's a manuscript page in this break room with a janitor's bucket. That feels hard to miss. And it's not the first one of those I found. They're, they are placing new pages behind me, aren't they? Or they're rewarding backtracking. Yeah, it's just right here on the fucking floor. What, three feet from the puddle and one foot from, or well, maybe a one and a half foot from this, what appears to be a faded blood stain. Now, hang on. I, I guess that's paint. Because if it was a faded blood stain, it would be brown, not pink. Bright Falls. The 81st annual Deer Fest was just around the corner. Everyone in Bright Falls was bustling. There were banners to be hung, pies baked, deer mass sold. Bright Falls had made the top 100 American small hey. town lists for its modest rustic charm. The town expected a lot of tourists this year, but a shadow hung over the deer fest preparations. Literally, yes. The forecast promised rain. Fearful whispers promised more murders. The police were on high alert. Sheriff Breaker had deputies patrolling the streets uh. at night. Bright Falls was no stranger to odd happenings. But to cancel Deerfest? Out of the question. The townsfolk were anxious. Their anticipation mixed with fear. People had restless dreams. The lights seemed dimmer. Flood water pressed in on the town. And the shadows poured in with it. That was really good wordplay right at the end there. Sorry, I got distracted about halfway through that because the subtitles started lagging really far behind the actual dialogue. Uh, for Justin's sake. The only line Alan has added here is the town expected a lot of tourists this year, but he has blocked out an entire paragraph below that. Fearful whispers promised more murders. Fair enough, fair enough. The lights seemed dimmer. I didn't... Maybe that's not just me. Maybe the, uh, the yellow lights aren't supposed to be yellow. A shout out to Justin Jones, who asks, Mechanically speaking, how intelligently do the Taken slash Shadows behave? And that's... Well, let's see. Uh, obviously nothing they say makes any sense in context. Like, they're just raving like lunatics. But, uh... Let's see. The sl I think they're called slashers, the ones that run up to me and swing something at me. They're just behaving like fucking wild men. They run right up to me and just flail their arms at me, usually two or three times in a go, and I have to, like, time the dodges to avoid them. But like, they're, like, putting all of their weight into every swing, so they're definitely, like, overcompensating and almost falling over and... Huh, I wonder if I can get down to that beach. No. There's a dotted line there. Alas. But there is another manuscript page that away. I think it's that away. Ye. Uh the fast ones, they're a bit more intelligent. They intentionally keep a fair distance from me. There's some of them right now. Right, travel time, I forgot. Fuck me, I got that guy! He compensated for the travel time. If I keep behind this tree, then he does. Cards in the general strap! Fuck, off he goes. Yeah, they. As soon as these guys notice me, they run like hell. They zip across the room, and they say they stop about 20 feet from me and start throwing. I will note that at no point do they actually seem like they're in pain. They, like, flick their heads back and you hit them, but they don't react like they're hurt most of the time. I have seen them get stunned enough to, like, put a hand on their face, but that's about it. 
And again, some of these weapons explicitly say, you hit them in the head twice and they'll be stunned or whatever. Oh yeah, I remember this place. Don't mind if I do. Oh, and reload this. Yeah, they're very good at keeping their distance. You run up to them, they'll just run away. In fact, they do tend to move around even if you're not moving. Presumably to make it harder to get a bead on them. Uh, the giants are kind of like the first guys, they, but they're much slower. They, like, run up to you and swing, like, a fucking log at you. So they put all... They have to put all of their... I definitely heard something hit the ground just now. I swear to God, if there's an explosive can over here... Actually, it would probably tell me. I don't see anything like that here. I wonder. Oh, uh, no, I, I don't have drop. I just have discard, which they explicitly told me means uh, destroy. Pass it, did I? Oh, fuck, I almost did. Manuscript page right here by the shore. This isn't the place, but it reminds me of the place where Alan washed ashore. What do we got here? We've got... Koskela's break into the FBC lab. Jesus Christ. Uh... Let's find ourselves a safe spot. Maybe the ranger's station. I can't remember if that was a safe place. I guess not, because it doesn't have those icons on it. Fine, I'll just go stand here right in the middle of the, uh, the thing here. At least it'll take them a moment to walk out of the woods to reach me. Oh, wait! There's a fucking light right there. I don't need a save spot. I can just stand in the light. The cultists, interestingly, the ones wearing the deer masks, act a lot more intelligently. They're not, like, shaking their heads or just flailing their arms at you. They're walking with purpose and trying to brain you. Almost as if they've kept more of themselves. I saw loading screen tips say that uh, enough uh, damage or... Uh, enough weapon or explosive damage will knock the masks off and make their heads way more vulnerable. Manuscript pages. Oops, I hit the tab instead of the over. Shit, where was it? There it is. Koskala's break into the FBC lab. Under Return 3 Local Girl. When the government seized the land around Cauldron Lake and set up their laboratory there, Ilmo Koskala knew they knew something. Together with his brother, they felt obliged to take a look inside. Uh, of course they did. The Federal Bureau of Control Security was a joke. The Koskalis walked in delivering coffee. Oh, God. Back in Watery, they poured over the stack of files they grabbed. The FBC was researching something in the lake, something they called the Shadow. Everyone who went into the lake came back a monster. Hartman had gone into the lake. He'd come back bad. The FBC had captured him, interrogated him. Based on his ravings, Barbara Jagger had gone into the lake as far back as the 60s. She'd come back bad. The writer, Alan Wake, had gone into the lake. He'd faced Jagger, pushed some mystic light switch into a hole in her chest, flicked the switch, and gotten rid of her. If Wake ever came back, he was bound to be bad as well. Oh. They think that the Alan that's with Casey, or that's now with the FBC, is Mr. Scratch. The fucking Cuscalas are ahead of me, man. God damn it. <laughs> man. Man! Yeah, I do remember that. I thought it was interesting because you know, it has a canonical name, The Dark Presence, but in Control it's only ever referred to as The Shadow in their official documentation. And they don't recall call them The Taken, they refer to them as Shaded Individuals. He added the lines, everyone who went into the lake came back a monster. Then, 
he can't he'd come back bad then she'd come back bad and then if wake ever came back he was bound to be bad as well maybe that was alan maybe i was controlling switch in the uh, switch uh, scratch in the other world you know i had this thought what if he erased his own memory so that he would think he's alan wake and the, the story would make him the protagonist you know i even went as crazy as what if he realized that the reason he lost in American Nightmare was because of me, the player? And so he'd written himself as the protagonist of a horror story to draw in me and give him the strength to, re uh, to respawn every time he dies. Like, I went got all the way into the fucking grapes, man. I was crazy. Uh, shout out to Torek00 once again, because once again I have a very oddly, specifically uh, related comment. Okay, I hadn't thought about it at the time, but the third thing, the monstrosity formerly known as Dr. Hartman, is a great example of why the FBC separates its collection so stringently. He's what happened when the darkness mixed with the hiss. So what would happen if, say, the threshold with infinitely spawning clocks mixed with the mesmerizing TV of Ati cleaning. Yeah, that would be very bad. There's a... If you didn't watch Let's Play Control, there's a TV there showing an, an infinitely looping video of Ati cleaning that they made while just observing him and trying to figure out what he was. But anyone who watches the uh, video becomes indefinitely... Anyone or anything, I should say, becomes indefinitely mesmerized by it and just stands there staring at the screen. Anyone except uh, Jesse, oddly enough. And, uh... I guess this way. And, uh... The other one, of course, was this weird threshold area inside. Sort of like an overlap. That means there's taken nearby. The light burned out when I walked out of it. Shit, I can't see anything. Well, that's a fucked up looking thing. I can see it's made of wood, but... It... Oh, those are roots. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, this is part of a tree that fell over. Never finished the thought about the shadows. Uh, the shadows, I'm honestly not sure of. I try to avoid looking at the shadows because they sometimes notice when I just point the regular flashlight beam at them. But for the most part, they seem to just slowly and ominously walk towards Alan and then just reach out, grab him, and they either just punch him or grab him and throw him to the ground. Uh, I don't know what they do to make it happen, because I'm not looking at them at the time, but sometimes it'll be like, two of them walk forward and one of them hangs back, and while I'm focusing on the two that are trying to punch me, the third one will, uh... summon a f well, essentially, what is essentially a fireball made of darkness. It's about the size of a volleyball, and it floats very slowly through the air, seeking Alan around corners. I think the only way to stop them is to make them run into something, or to shine the flashlight on them. You know, use a charge on them. I'm not sure if they respawn or just walk back in. I did notice that when the, uh, the, the fast shadows are just playing a walking animation really fast, it looks really unsettling. <laughs> huh, nothing appeared at the cabin back there. It's really hard to describe the shadows. They start off as just a black outline of a person in th hanging out in three-dimensional space. Which one is this? This, uh, nurse this lunchbox here. I was going to leave you some cookies, but I was worried an animal would get into them, so I didn't, but it's the thought that counts, right? There isn't an A prompt to pull myself up right here. Oh, man. 
This isn't the path there. This is like a little fishing uh, spot. Wait a minute. Oh, fuck. I remember this. This is where I fought two of the uh, divers at once for the first time. Oh, and there's the timer. Oh, I remember this. Getting up here is kind of a pain, isn't it? There's exactly one path. Oops. I'm past the stairs. Yeah, I guess not. What was up here? I don't even remember. A nursery rhyme, obviously. Well, I guess I got all the test sites, so it doesn't really matter. If there's a deer head in here, I can pet. <laughs> no, no, no. I do want to get that one. I'm just not sure where to find it. At least it'll probably be in watery or, uh... Bright Falls over there. Well, I guess in the next episode, I'll be heading back to uh, town to take a look at... Uh, well, let's see, there's a manuscript page right next to my fucking car, for starters. A point of interest just inside the entrance to the Elderwood Palace Lodge. And two, three, four, five, six... Sorry, six... Uh, containers... Oh, they are behind the locked door, aren't they? Fuck. Well, I'll keep looking around. There's all sorts of goodies here. Oh, that's not annoying at all, is it? Yes. Well, it's a nice sunset. I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Alan Wake 2! When we continue our journey through the night, even if it is daytime. And, uh, well, look into treasure in Bright Falls. Till then, have yourselves a great day. And, uh, stay in the light. <laughs>